Hello, thanks for joining Full Record Jacket with Phil and Ben. I'm the Phil. This is the Ben. Now, we've just come on to talk about music news on this particular little segment. So, Ben, obviously you've got your finger on the pulse of the world. What's been happening? Don't know, Phil. Literally got nothing. (laughs) I'm literally... See this? This is my bucket of news. Nothing. Nothing. The only thing I've really got is... um, I think Kelly Jones' side project, Far From Saints, have um, released or going to release a new single, Take It Through the Night, and they've uh, announced some stadium gigs and uh, album release date, I believe. I've I've heard okay. one song. It's quite good. It's quite folky, country sort of with what you'd expect from a Kelly Jones vocal. Well, I will talk in just a moment about it, but... Obviously, there's a new album from U2, which is due to drop on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, drop. Oh, that's a, I'm, see, I'm very trendy nowadays. I use the, the expression drop. Albums used to get released. Now they get dropped. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is a bit like of a bad thing to do. most of the artists do, do yeah, these days. Not a good thing to do with albums nowadays, especially as so many of them seem to be on vinyl. Um, you could damage vinyl by dropping it. But um, I was reading that... Recently, we had the 40th anniversary of the compact disc itself. It came out in 1983. Yes. And this week, or just very recently anyway, it's been uh, announced that for the first time since 1987, vinyl has outsold CDs. And, um, yeah. I've bought most of that's, that. I'm talking about new vinyl, mainly. Oh, you know. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've not, got some new not... vinyl. Look, I've got... That's new. And, oh, it is new. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's new. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's new. And um, this is new. So... Um... Now, the thing with vinyl has always been quality of pressings, because there was a time, particularly towards the end of the original vinyl era, when CDs took over. You used to buy vinyl records, and they used to have crackles on them from the start, usually because they've been taken out of the stamper too quickly. And... Um, if you press vinyl properly, it's great. If you don't press it properly, it's not so great. So Metallica, the um, what do we call her Metallica? Are they heavy metal, are they thrash metal, or whatever they are. We all heavy know rock. The, the legendary heavy rock band uh, have actually bought their own vinyl pressing plant, and uh, apparently Metallica last year sold three hundred eighty-seven thousand albums on the vinyl format. And that's without them having released a new record. They didn't make any new record last year. They just sold from their back catalogue 387,000 It's amazing, albums. isn't it, really? The figures. It is, it is quite amazing. So, um, yeah, no doubt they are making sure of the quality control. They're not the first rock stars to do this. Jack White owns um, he does, a record yeah, label. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so and I think he put a plea out, didn't he, for people like HMV and all these older companies was hmv used to have pressing plants to sort of restart the machine man restart it let's give us more vinyl so kids can buy more taylor swift so there we are yes and then taylor swift does sell a lot of vinyl apparently mainly to kids who don't necessarily play it they just have it to adorn their bedrooms uh, I, I do have a taylor swift vinyl there it's not go, mine, it's my daughter's, and it's never been played. So that analogy does actually work completely there, Phil. Yeah, so there we are. That's how. That's another way to sell records, to sell them to people that can't actually play them. But, um, yeah, on the, on the release front, uh, I saw today um, Bono and The Edge have been at the BBC, and they've been performing. They did uh, three songs, uh, two of which are on the forthcoming U2 album, which is a new album and an old album, but it's not old songs, but it is old songs, but they've been newly re-recorded. Does that make sense? What? That's how new the U2 album is. It's called Songs of Surrender. comes out on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th of March. It's got a standard edition where you can buy a single CD that's got 16 songs on it. There's also a super deluxe edition where they have recorded no fewer than 40 songs 100 yeah 165 minutes there's four discs 10 tracks on each disc each disc is named 
after one of the four band members and they allegedly chose their own individual track lists but there's no repetition mm. and it's 40 different songs and they've been re-recorded now this is pretty controversial because i've seen a lot of adverts for this on facebook and i've seen a lot of people commenting who purport to be u2 fans to some degree or other and they're not impressed by the fact that the band are doing this and they haven't also been impressed by the samples they've heard so far i'm reserving my judgment till i've heard the whole full. thing properly. Um, I've read a couple of reviews by critics who are more favourable than some of these fans, to be honest, on, on some of these reviews so far. Some say it's a bit of a mixed results, but some of the songs are reimagined or you know done in, yeah. but they all generally done in slightly more mellow versions. So yeah, because I did say they sounded a little bit like demos. They do, in a way, yes, in a way, if they'd released some of these and said it was the demo, people would have believed it, for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. The song. Um, and if I look at uh, this website here, You Discover Music, um, they've got a headline here, U2's Bono and The Edge reveal admiration for ABBA and cover SOS. They did a version of SOS with the BBC Concert Orchestra today. Uh, they also performed one and vertigo but um this u2 liking ABBA is nothing new because 30 years ago i saw them from very close up perform dancing queen so it's nothing well, in the new. changing rooms afterwards so. <laughs> it's, it's been well known for a long time that bono particular admires ABBA, and bono does like quite a lot of stuff that's not necessarily considered to be cool rock man so yeah. um He's got quite a wide range of influences. So it didn't surprise me that they were covering SOS, having seen them do Dancing Queen before. But there we are. Um, I'll try and take a look at this U2 album. and maybe, maybe I'll even do a review of it, Ben. Nick, I look forward to it, Phil, because if you review it, I may then listen to it. Possibly. Maybe. Okay. That's a deal, then. Shall we shake? <laughs> 